Gravity. It keeps us on Earth, keeps the galaxy together, and is found to be strongest at a black hole. Black holes are usually what is left at the end of the life of a massive star, a star that has a mass greater than about 2.7 solar masses. This happens because the star has run out of elements that can fuse together. Stars carry on fusing hydrogen atoms to helium, lithium, beryllium, and on and on, until it gets to iron. When most of the fuel has been made into iron, fusion stops and the radiation pressure disappears. This pressure is what keeps the star stable for most of its main sequence. For example, our sun's gravity is trying to attract all its mass into its centre, and it also has radiation pressure from the fusion that pushes outwards onto the star. When these two forces are balanced, the star does not change size and it remains stable. Once the radiation pressure goes, the gravity of a massive star is so strong that it overcomes all kinds of degeneracy pressures in order to collapse into what we call a singularity. A singularity is a point of infinite density with a gravitational pull so strong that even light cannot escape its pull. Does this only apply to large masses? It is actually a misconception that only giant stars can become black holes. In fact, you can make a black hole out of our sun, the earth, or even a human. You just need to concentrate that matter into a small enough volume, and this is the bit that a big star can easily do with its gravity. To demonstrate this, here's a question. I'm standing on the earth, at a distance of about 6,371 kilometers away from the center of the earth. At the surface, I experience roughly 9.8 meters per second squared of acceleration due to gravity. Now I'm 6,371 kilometers above the ground, in space. So now I'm double the distance away from the center. How much acceleration do I experience now? I'll give you a moment to think. The correct answer is four times less. This is because Newton's law of gravitation shows that the gravitational field strength is inversely proportional to r squared, with r being the separation between two objects. Here is a graph demonstrating this principle. As you can see, at two times the radius of the Earth, the gravitational field strength has dropped by four times as much. And when the distance to the center of the Earth gets closer and closer to zero, the gravitational field strength increases at a massive rate. So does this mean that at the center of the Earth, we will experience as much gravity as a black hole and get instantly spaghettified? The answer is no, because Newton's equation assumes that the masses you are calculating with are point masses, meaning that the mass is at a very tiny singularity, a bit like a black hole. The equation works well when you are outside an object, such as when we are outside the Earth. However, when you go deeper into the Earth, there is mass all around you. When you finally reach the center, the mass will be tugging you from all directions equally, so there is no net force, and this means that at the center, you can actually just float around like you would in space. In order to get a black hole, we need to make the Earth more like a point mass so that we can get close enough to feel very strong gravity. As you can see from the graph we showed before, the field strength has an asymptote at the y-axis, and this shows that if you get infinitesimally closer to the point mass, you get infinitely larger values for the field strength, no matter what your mass was. So if you can make a mass get down to a special size, where even light cannot escape its gravitational pull, we get a black hole. This size is a sphere, the radius of which is known as the Schwarzschild radius. I don't know how to say that. Is this Schwarzschild? Schwarzschild? I have no clue. You can derive the equation for the Schwarzschild radius by using the speed of light as v in the equation for escape velocity. Once a mass is smaller than the Schwarzschild radius, the black hole formed will have an event horizon at that radius from the center of the black hole. The event horizon is the distance at which the escape velocity is the speed of light. If you're closer to the black hole than this distance, you can never escape it. But if you're further away than that distance, then there is still a glimmer of hope that you can escape its gravitational pull. You just need to be going fast enough. Here's a fun fact. 
The Schwarzschild radius of the Earth is 8.87 millimeters. Yep, that's right, less than a centimeter. If you can manage to squeeze the Earth into that size, then you've succeeded in making your very own black hole. The last misconception that we are covering today is that black holes suck up matter like a vacuum cleaner and eventually will end up swallowing the whole universe. This is not true, as a black hole simply follows Newton's law of gravitation. If you get far enough away from a black hole, the force you feel towards it will be, for all practical purposes, zero. There's a supermassive black hole at the centre of our galaxy, but because all the stars are at great distances away from it, they can orbit the centre without any danger of falling in. Instead of a vacuum cleaner sucking things up, think of a black hole being a bit like this cat. If you're far away from it, it won't pose a threat at all. But if a sock comes near it, it pulls it in, never to be seen again. Today, we learned about Newton's law of gravitation and what a black hole is. We cleared up some misconceptions and discussed the Schwarzschild radius. But what are black holes truly like? And will a black hole made from the Earth exist forever? What does Einstein's theory of general relativity have to do with it? That's a tale for another time.